Hello YouTube. So I've started playing Final Fantasy nine uh fourteen since twenty nineteen and I've seen my fair share of drama all over the place. I still love the game to this day, but this drama took place not too long ago, so I wanted to talk about it and see your guys' thoughts and what do you guys think. So joining me here, Kaiser Wolf and Sigma Six, and we wanted to share this. I know it's a silly drama, but so it happened to Kaiser mainly. I was there too. My friend Sigma here. <laughs> They're all near me. He <laughs> just does the slap emote. So, this whole drama. Yeah, say hi, guys. So, this whole drama happened because of a single emote. You want to start, Kaiser? Yeah, hey, I'm both. I've been playing this game since the pretty much the release of 2.0 back in 2013. Uh, just after it. And I've been in this community, I've seen the community come together over things, and I've seen the drama that uh, can happen. Hunt drama, anything. But this one goes back about nine months, just over, and it was a slap with a Lala acquaintance that we had at the time. Now, Hart and I were hanging out, I believe it was on her island, with the Lalafell. We were talking, chatting, and the Lalafell just happened to say a really bad joke. Now, what the joke was, I can't tell you, because from everything that's happened, it's been lost to time. Even then, I, it was just, I don't remember what it was, but it was bad enough that I'm like, that is terrible, and I slapped him. He got so offended, he just stopped talking to us, disappeared, the next day we tried to come, you know, and talk about it, but it was still like, dude, it was a bad joke. The guy is older than us, but he plays a Lalafell that is, he says it's really young, you know, eight years old. Now, the dev team have said Lalafells are not children and nobody should play them as children. But people are going to do what they're going to do. He very much liked his character, and the slap was a slap to not only the character, but a slap to him. And this is another thing of just... the guy. Like I said, the guy's older than us. The character's way younger. You're sending an eight-year-old in to a game where you're fighting literal gods. But... He also doesn't always act like that eight-year-old kid. He also acts like his very, I want to say, perverted old self. Because he would run, under, run underneath the skirts of any in-game female characters, especially the tall ones. Now, this to me just kind of screams an anime trope. You know, you got Mineta... Or Momonosuke from My Hero Academia or One Piece or, you know, any of the isekais where you have an older guy going into a baby's potty, you know, and then all of that shenanigans. He's also gone to any in-game roleplay area and gotten drunk on his, as he quotes, eight-year-old Lalafell. I... I a lot of disconnect to me. The other thing is, he's older than us, but to him we were uncle and auntie. And, yeah, no. So, he also had an in-game um, family with other people from his guild. He had an in-game that that is a whole separate set of drama. But for the slap itself, it comes down to one other thing. And this happened to Hart. It didn't happen to me. But he very much is attached to his care. 
as is almost anybody else, Heart, myself, Sigma here, anybody, we like to use the Glamour system. Heart was making a Glamour. He decides to say, Oh, you're dressing up your cardboard cutout. Now, to me, after everything that just happened, because that was, what, just the day after or so? Oh, yeah, I believe so. The next day. Yeah. After everything that happened with this one slap, you're going to call somebody else's character a cardboard cutout. Now, to me, that is even worse than just an in-game slap that there's no sound for it unless you're doing the high five. You know, there... I don't understand where this kind of mindset would come in at. Like I said, there's so much disconnect between a simple slap for just a bad joke. I mean, how many of us have had a friend or relative that have said a bad joke and you're just you smack him, like, on the shoulder or something. You know, like, dude, that was terrible. Why? And you facepalm. Like, why did you say this? Now, I, I went about the family thing. And this also can be another part of this whole drama. Of, he had an in-game wife. And his in-game wife had an actual husband in real life. But he was so attached to her that that didn't matter. And the husband is actually Sigma. So if you want to go on a little bit about that, Sigma. Yeah, Sigma. Yeah, so uh, a little bit about me is that uh, I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV since 2009. It was shortly after the launch. I bought the game as a, as a, as a gift when I came back from being overseas. Now, um, my in-game wife and I... Well, we both shared the same character. It wasn't always like that. So basically, in uh, I was just saying, my real life wife, in I guess in game wife, in the same sense, we both shared the same character. Um, back then, the character was um, her name was Mika, and well, basically it was Mikasa. And so one point in time that I used to play this game almost religiously, <laughs> to the point to where I got so burnt out on playing the game, I decided that I was going to stop playing for a while. So in order to keep my character in the loop, it was another character that was uh, a family member of mine that recently started playing. So Mika and this family member of mine, we decided that, well, she was going to take over my character and, you know, show the ropes so they can both learn the game together. So the whole concept with Mika is that she's a very vibrant outspoken person she is a very welcoming person and there's nothing wrong with that so the thing is is that since me and her are married in real life and so she was like well we wanted to get bonded because she went to a friend ceremony and she absolutely loved it now we played other mmo games before especially another final fantasy game where both veterans of final fantasy 11 which it was very hard to get bonded in that game um if you wanted to get married it was like a three-year waiting list. So a lot of people just kind of threw their own shindig and just kind of, quote-unquote, off paper, uh, they were married in that game. So in this game, she always wanted to, you know, to see what one of those ceremonies were like. And when she figured out that it's a lot easier in this game, so she got, got hooked to the idea. So she was like, well, maybe you should make a character, me, um, and we should get bonded in the game. And I was like, but... Mikasa is my character, so I'm gonna have to make a whole nother character and start over from scratch because you wanted to get bonded. I was just like, why don't you just find somebody in game that you can get bonded to? And so we were, you know, both active members in our in our guild. So she decided that she was going to get somebody that was in the guild that wasn't, you know, very out there. It was kind of like a newer player. Um, it kind of stayed to themselves, and then that's how she ended up getting to that. So I was like, hey, look, as long as it's like an in-game thing, um, it's not one of those things where it got very personal, then that was that was fine. And uh, so she was like, well, it was mainly for the whole aspect of, you know, the whole bondage uh, between the two characters to see the ceremony and get to know a close friend. And that's basically how that happened. Uh, I should say exactly how that whole bonding situation ended up happening.
Oh, about the... Uh, Sorry. <clears throat> but about the fallout. The... Yeah. Oh, okay. So, wait, was, was this... Kind of the lead up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so there was a uh, the situation which kind of led to the fallout between, um, I should say between this this trio of at this point in time what we always considered as friends because, uh, you know, my then wife <laughs> was still walking around and she was playing as the character and so the thing was was that we both shared it and we both kind of swapped between. Uh, who was actively playing. So we were both going off of basically who was playing at the time was either going off of their real name or it was basically going off a of surname. So um, so the thing was, was that that's how people can tell us apart. So that way they can be like, oh, it's Sigma on or it's, you know, um, you know, party member A. And, you know, I'm not going to drop any names in. But um, so that way people can kind of tell who they were dealing with, who's on the sticks. So one of the main issue was, was that um, party member A, which was my wife, uh, decided that she ended up taking this job that took her overseas. And so she went overseas and um, she was gone for a little over a little over a year. Now, basically, this happened right between uh, right between like the beginning of COVID. So when all that stuff happened, you know, she wasn't able to come back. So because of the whole travel restrictions, she was stuck overseas. So the thing was, is that when she came back from being overseas, um, she ended up getting involved with another person. So we ended up calling things off and, you know, and everything was kind of just from there. So this person that we're actually having this discussion about um, was constantly asking about who this person was. Now, the thing is, is that I have been on an active um hiatus from this game i would probably say for the better part of like almost two years not to say that I, I stopped loving the game it's just that i became a content creator and a streamer and all this other you know all these other different things and i got got pulled away from the game um and i just had other things that i wanted to do so i took a back seat for this from this game so the whole concept of it was was that she was going to create another character and then kind of jump in but you know plans kind of fell through and that didn't really quite work out the way it was so while uh while we were gone i started doing like the whole youtube and you know twitch and all that other stuff um where he ended up joining kaiser's group and everybody in the group was kind of wondering when she was going to come back home and i broke the news to everybody all at once including this you know the individual that this whole thread is about um and i was like hey look uh she's back home but she's not coming back to the game and she's not coming back to the group and he was really offended about that like he took he took the news better than i did <laughs> and i'm i'm the actual husband here and uh so he was Actually, like well I she did you took it better than he did because he was about ready to cry yeah so it. it was just like what did she think about us did she think about me and it was like but bro, you're you're kind of like the in-game person, like you know whatever that was you know was going on in this game, whether it's role play or whatever the case may be, was a fabricated ordeal. It, anything that was there was all make believe and real, uh, wasn't real. So the whole thing was was like after a while, he got to the point to where he was just like, well, I, I don't know if I'll be able to play the game again, you know, because. At one point, they had aspirations of building a house, which, you know, there's a whole housing in-game system here. So he had got this house, and they got it together, and, you know, they helped decorate it. So while she was gone, he wanted to, you know, save up money and upgrade from a small house to, like, a large house, which is like a mansion. And that didn't really quite work out the way that it was supposed to. And it was, like, really, really sad that that fruition didn't really happen. And it was just like... At the end of the day, when the whole thing kind of went down, it was kind of like me, 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 and it was like, bro, you're this. This has kind of nothing to do with you. Like real lives are really implemented and impacted by this decision. Now, whatever this is, I mean, this might as well have been an NPC relationship in real life. Like you don't have sway. This doesn't really affect you because this person that I mean, now there's emotions that are tied and invested in these characters because we do spend a lot of time playing with these characters but at the end of the day they're characters and at the end of the day at some point these characters will get wiped off the map the servers can't last forever at some point you're going to have to part with your character it just it just is what it is but the whole concept between 
like that whole dynamic was just kind of like a weird one. So it was just kind of like you treated that situation like it was more so to real life, even though it was a game. And then when it was no longer a situation where it was like an outside event, it impacted them from like the game outwards, which was like the weirdest fallout I've ever seen. Yeah, so at the end of the day, it's all about, like, why would you see this game as real life or something way too serious than it should have? Like, at the end of the day, it's just a game. Something that, like, your character, you don't own them. It just belongs to Square Enix. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we put in a lot of time to these characters, so and we play through the story, so obviously we're going to get attached to the characters. Right. But it, yes, like they've said, they're just code. They're just things made by a company that the company can take away at any time. Right. Which, yes, would make anybody upset. And I've been... I've had a number of people come up in-game and do any number of emotes on my character, and I'm just like, okay. Um, I don't know you, or if I do... Uh, you know, it, it's a character. I've been, I've had people, you know, hug me, slap me, whatever. If I, I, I don't, like, I understand to an extent, but I feel like there's some times where things get taken too far. Right. And, yeah. And like I said before, he wants to call somebody else dressing up a cardboard, a character, a cardboard cutout, but... He gets upset when that cardboard cutout gets slapped. Yeah, it's... And on that aspect, like, you know, everybody plays a game differently, and they're like, we were saying that there is emotional ties built into our characters, which there is, because, you know, if you look at my ninja that I have here, it's a very, very uh, elaborate design for a ninja. get compliments on the whole Assassin's Creed look on my character a lot. There's, there's this run of stigmata in the game that the true end game is to... You know, find ways to make your character look as complete as badass as you can. Because when you're when you're caught up on content and your character's all leveled up, what keeps you coming back to the game? You you find those small new issues um, that's within the game that that keeps you coming back. And the glamour sister is one of them. And hardcore uh, Kaiser and a lot of other players put a lot of thought and a lot of content into making their characters look as cool look make it look like they have like their own particular theme there's a lot of thought and concept that goes behind it and plus it's one of those things is expressing yourself within the game but it's not one of those things that people take too seriously because you might wear i mean there's there's characters that runs around male characters that run around in the 2b bottoms so they're running around with thongs with all this other stuff and i mean but nobody takes that seriously you know in with the whole uh, emote system. Everybody knows that the emotes are in the game for a specific reason, but they're not there to mean um, disrespect. Now, anything taken out of context can be taken as disrespect. So, like, if I'm actually having an, an in-game argument with somebody, and then somebody comes by and slaps my character, I mean, what can you really do? I mean, you, you can't fight the character, because you know, you're in an area that's like a dungeon where there's no PvP that's allowed. I mean, the only thing you can do is just report the person, kind of move on. Um, but the thing is, or is you that the, the boxing emote or something. Yeah, or something like that. You know, you, you you take matters into your own hands the way that you can, but it's not one of those things that you're supposed to get offended about. So the things that when you do get offended about something it just means that you're insecure. And when it does come from a thing where it's like, well, you can have you can talk to other players and you can say, well, I don't understand why you're so invested in your glamour system in a.k.a. Why, you know, you, you're putting a lot of thought and effort in dressing up your cardboard character. Hence, your cardboard character is this kid that you're trying to portray in, you know, there's an aspect of role playing. There's players that I know that speak in only old English. Uh, there's some characters that uh, that have like Scottish accents in real life. They don't have Scottish accents, all that stuff. So there's all kind of different elements of role playing and becoming the character that they want or they see themselves in the game because at the end of the day, this is a game. You know, this is an escape from real life to be, you know, this person in the game that you wouldn't other ordinarily 
have access to. If I wanted to fight a dragon, I couldn't do that in real life, but I can do that in this game. So every person has like their own way of letting loose and living their character the way that they want. But at the end of the day, if uh, if I disrespect another character and I slap this character, is that really hurting you? Or is this kind of like a disrespect to the character? And when you take it to the points where if you get slapped in game and you treat it as an assault to you as your manhood, then then there's this weird disconnect that isn't that that should be happening that isn't happening. And it's just like, why are you going to get offended because your character got slapped and you're asso associating this as you physically being slapped? And that's where that whole weird dynamic happens. It's like it's a game other people see it as a game. So if I do something in game, why is it affecting you in real life? Why are you offended about it? Um, and that's kind of like that weird little synergy that we have. And that's kind of what led up to this whole thing, but not just us, but it's happened to other players who've also made content regarding the same issue. Like the slap issue is becoming to take off and not just this game, but in a few other games, but prominently within this game over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we're not doing this, like, this whole video is not about, like, attacking any person. We just wanted to get this off of our chest and to see what other people's thoughts and theories about this whole thing. Like, I've read, like, not too long ago, I've seen videos about another emo drama. So when it happened, I actually laughed at it and be like, yeah, what if, like, since this whole thing is happening, why not talk about it right now? This is the, the best time and place to talk about. So it's not like we're not saying, hey, go attack this person, or we're like berating this person. We just want to see the, the whole dynamic and what's going on like around this game, especially this game. And other games, I'm pretty sure, but... Right. This is just a very big MMO going on, so there's a lot go to it. And as I've said, there's been drama or other things that have happened. I mean, we've seen things in game like um, pe you've lost people, you know, in real life to something. People have held in-game ceremonies. Um, we had just a while back, what was it, a year or two ago, the creator of Berserk passed away and the community came together <laughs> as Dark Knights. Yeah, that visual, uh, that visual was sick. Yeah, to show respect. So, it's not just, we're not just wanting to, you know, say that, oh, there's only bad things. No, there's been good things, but there's been a number of drama, and this is just one that has pertained to us. Yeah, and this game actually has like a really great fan base, a really great community. Even people like Asmund Gold, um, when they made uh, the leap during the whole World of Warcraft e Exodus and everything like that. You know, uh, MMOs are very, very known for having very toxic relationships because, or not necessarily toxic relationships, necessarily toxic uh, communities, mainly because of the fact that their characters are so well invested into they're the I mean, because when you invest years out of your life to, in, you know, invest your character to make them the strongest around, to make them look the coolest around, of course, there's going to be a stigmata about it. And when you get that many people that's involved in their character, of course, you're going to think when you come in, people are going to jump on you because you don't know the mechanics of the game. Uh, like there's a couple like flight sim simulators. You jump in that. Those guys are going to ram you play Battlefield one. And you try to jump inside of a, or like battlefield, and try to jump inside of a helicopter or airplane. You don't know how to fly it. People are going to get upset with you. But that's not the community here. Final Fantasy XIV has one of the most open, uh, non-hostile, most friendliest communities around. You're a new player. It shows it by having a sprout over your head. And there's so many times where characters will just come out of their way, or say people will come out of the way that genuinely help you. So this isn't like an attack on you know, the general fan base of like MMOs or Final Fantasy 14s, because most of them really do have a great fan base. They really have a great community. Everybody's really supportive. But then there's a few that kind of just take things way too far. Um, you get the ones that, who are just naturally, you know, narcissistic. They're the ones that make, the, I mean, they, they, they spoil the broth for everybody else. And then you have those who are constantly victims, especially those that are grown adults who can't separate things that should, that as a grown adult would, would be able to, to separate what should be fantasy and what should be fact. 
and what should be, you know, realism. And you, if you can't separate those as an adult and you're constantly falling into victimhood and not being able to understand, OK, well, it, it, something might happen to me in game and I'll be like, you know, this really sucks. But it's not one of those things that I'm going to lash out at my friends over. It's not going to be one of those things that I'm going to destroy friendships over because of something that happened in game that's either preventable or something that was nowhere near as serious as it is. And then there's some mm -hmm. people who just they, they they fall to that. And this this isn't the first incident where something like that has happened with this individual. There's there's a handful of other situations where the first thing that they want to do is turn around and turn sheet and turn ghosts in the middle of the night when everybody's sleeping. They leave out of the guild. They clear out their you know their their player house or whatever. And then the next couple of days, you're like, hey, we haven't seen this person in the next couple of days. They blacklist half the people in the community. So then you turn around and ask them like, hey, bud, what's up? Oh, you know, this and this and this happened. It's like, but that could be avoidable. And did you have to burn everybody's bridge in order for you to leave because something happened that you didn't agree with? You know, there's, mm -hmm. you can't win all the fights. You can't win everything. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have those things that kind of turn against you. But at the end of the day, it's a game. You know, everybody comes yeah. into this game to escape, to relax. But when it becomes more than a game and it starts to replace your real life, and you start to substitute what happens in the game for your real life. And when things that happen in game happens in game and you think that it happens to you in real life, there's clearly a problem. Right. But uh, without this getting to be a, you know, three hours long, <laughs> I think we should at least end it there. Because, right. again, this is what it comes down to is just a, a drama that happened almost a year ago coming up that you yeah, know, I think we just it wanted to get off our chest. December. Yeah, it was right uh, during the holidays. It was either right before or right at, uh, I think it was it right was, before the holidays. Yeah, it was around nine and a half months ago. So, yep. And we are in June right now, so. Mm -hmm. But with that, you know, I'll leave it to Hart to take us mm -hmm. out on. Well, <laughs> with that... Let me know what you guys think in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts or what do you think about this whole situation with the emotes lately? Yeah, and has something like that happened to you guys? And what was your experiences with it? Mm -hmm. Pass it around, see what your friends think. Right. Even the ones that don't play, you know, they may not play this game, but they play other games. Yeah. Maybe they've had other situations in another game. Mm -hmm. But with that said, I'm going to end it here, but I'm going to put kaiser wolves and sigma six twitch channel if you want to check them out they're really cool people but okay let me know what you guys think in the comments it's it's fine if you'd like want to debate do anything just i, I want to hear your thoughts so with that said see you guys later and take care bye bye, bye. laters bye.